How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today we're going to be having a look at five useful JavaScript math functions. So let's get right into it. Okay, starting us off here, we have a function called abs or abs. Now, this right here is going to return you the absolute value of a number which you pass in. In other words, if you pass in a negative number, it's going to return you the positive equivalent of that number. If you pass in a positive number, it's going to return the exact same number. So basically, it's going to guarantee that whatever you pass in, you're going to get a positive number being outputted. Let's see an example console.log, then pass through here, math.abs, and pass through negative seven. I'll save this go inside the browser here, and we get a positive seven in the output. It takes that negative seven and returns you the positive version of that number. If you pass in a positive number initially, I'll save it and go back in the browser here, we still get a positive seven, because of course, seven is already positive, therefore, we don't need to uh, convert the number to anything else. So it's gonna guarantee a positive number. Now, this is rather straightforward and a simple function, but it has come in handy in some of my recent projects, so it's definitely good to know. Now, there is also a really cool example uh, you know, of how you can use this function, and that is to create your own implementation of a difference uh, function. So I'm gonna say here, function difference, just like this. It's gonna take in two numbers, A and B, and it's gonna return you the difference between these two numbers. And this example is also on the MDN page, if you're interested, linked down below. You simply say here, return math.abs and pass through A negative B, or sorry, A minus B, and you're going to get the difference between those two numbers. Let's say console.log, five and oh, my, uh, my mistake here we're going to pass through five and two into the difference function just like this so passing through five and two should give us three i'll save this go back in the browser and of course we get three now let's try with a negative number uh, as a result so five minus two is going to be three what if i say five minus seven negative two and we're going to get two in the console so we of course always get that difference between those two numbers so a really cool function that you can definitely uh, use at some point Next, we have math.max and math.min. So these two are similar, but one of them is for the upper uh, max and one of them is for the minimum. So you may have heard of these before. And basically, uh, let's take math.max, for example. If you pass in two numbers, it's going to return you whatever number is the max out of those two. And this here comes in handy, especially when you're dealing with building user interfaces where let's say you pass in like a, a width and then a height and you want to work out what's the longest length of that square or whatever it may be things like that these uh, these functions come in handy so let's say console.log then pass through here math.max let's pass through 5 and 10 now we expect 10 to be the output of this function because of course 10 is more than 5 i'll save this go back in the browser and we get 10 right there let's swap this around let's say 10 and then 5 and see how we go uh, you may know the result already it's going to give you 10 as well because of course the order doesn't matter as long as you know whatever the largest number is you're going to get that out of the uh, math.max function now the same thing goes for math.min i'm going to say math.min here and we're always going to get five save this back in the browser and of course we get five this time around because of course five is the minimum of these two numbers now you may not know, but you can actually pass in more than two numbers into these functions. So let's go inside here and say something like two and 20 and 40 and then one. Now in this case here, we're passing in six numbers and it's still gonna work. Math.min should give us one because one is the lowest number which is being passed in. Save this back in the browser and we get one right there. One last thing to cover on these functions is that you can use them pretty uh, simply with arrays as well and the spread operator. Let's say that this is actually an array of numbers. Now, you can't pass an array into math.min. It needs to be multiple numbers as the type. So if I save this back in the browser, we get not a number. So to fix this, we just use a spread operator, dot, 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 and it is going to take these array elements and pass them as, as sorry, pass them in as individual arguments. So I'll save this back in the browser and we get one once again. So you can use that with arrays by using the spread operator. 
Okay, next on the list is gonna be math.floor and math.seal. Now, these two methods or functions are probably gonna be um, uh, the most common out of the list today, but essentially, uh, math.floor is gonna take your decimal number and then round down to the nearest positive integer, so rounding down, math.seal, as the name suggests, is going to go up and give you the nearest positive integer. So let's see in action. Let's say console.log math.floor, and you're also, of course, going to see this being commonly used with math.random. Now, math.floor, if I pass in 4.6, okay, obviously 0.6 is in the upper range of the 4, so you might expect 5 if you were to round this, but math.floor is going to take it down to the nearest positive integer, save this back in the browser and we get 4. So take the 4.6, give 4. Let's pass in 4.9999 and keep going, save this back in the browser, we still get 4. So it rounds down. Let's now pass in or use math.seal, the exact same concept, but of course this time it's going to be the higher number, so 4.9 is going to give us 5, save this, back in the browser and we get 5, let's do 4.2 just for demonstration, save this, back in the browser and of course we get 5. Now, it's important to note that for a lot of these math functions, including the ones that are not covered in today's video, you can use these quite uh, directly using array.map. Okay, so let's say I'll make a new constant here called numbers equal to and make this 4.5. Let's do uh, 8.9. Let's do 3.2 and let's do 7.1. So we have all of these numbers here. Now, I want to use math.seal to round all of these up. Okay, now it's going to be really straightforward using uh, the map function or method and then passing in math.seal. Let's say const numbers rounded up equal to numbers dot map. As we know, the map function is going to run for every single value inside your array and then return you a transformed value. So if you pass in four elements like this, you're going to get four elements back with a transformation function. So we're going to say math dot seal by simply passing the reference to math.seal and not calling it with the double parentheses like this, by passing a reference, it is going to work the exact same way. So now if I also say console.log numbers and then console.log numbers rounded up, we're going to see that obviously that the second one is going to be rounded up. I'll save this back in the browser and we get 5, 9, 4 and 8. All of those have been rounded up. And that is done using the map right there. So you don't need to make a separate arrow function and actually return the value. You can simply pass them in directly like this to give you a clean one-liner for your transformations. Okay, next up we have math.sqrt or square root. Now, as the name suggests, it's going to give you the square root of the number which you pass in. As an example, we know that 6 times 6 is 36. So if you pass in 36 to the square root function, you're going to get 6 as the result. Let's see this in action. Let's say console.log math.square root or sqrt and pass through here 25. 5 times 5 is 25. Therefore, we expect to get 5 in the console. I'll save this, go back in the browser and we get 5 right there. So very straightforward function. It gives you the square root of the number which you pass in. And it's definitely useful to add to your collection and it's good to know. Now, I think it's interesting that there is an equivalent of math.pow, which gives you the power to for a number as an operator. So you can say times times to give you the power of a number, for example, five to the power of two, but you can't do the exact same thing with the square root function because it hasn't got an equivalent operator like math.pow does. Now, maybe I could have explained that a little bit better. I apologize, but the point I'm trying to make here is that math.pow has a operator equivalent, whereas math.square root does not have the equivalent. So interesting, but good to know. Okay, the last one here is going to be called math.sign. Now, this one is probably the least known out of the uh, five I've covered today, but essentially math.sign is going to tell you whether or not a number is negative 
or positive, but it's going to do so by returning you a negative one and a one, which may come in handy for any expressions that you are doing. Let me show you how it works. Console.log math.sign. Now, I'm going to pass through here negative 1 as the value. I'll save this, go back in the browser, and we get negative 1 right there. Okay, so we get the exact same number which we pass in. Now, that is just a coincidence that I passed in negative 1 because if I pass through negative 5, it is a negative number. Save this back in the browser. We still get negative 1. Okay, let's say I pass in a positive 5. Save this back in the browser. We get 1. What about a zero? What do we get? Save back in the browser and we get zero. So what's happening here is basically if you pass in a negative number, you get negative one as the output. If you pass in zero, you get zero as the output. If you pass in a positive number, you get one as the output. So this might have, well, I see it as having two main use cases. The first one is to do a simple check. Is this number positive or negative? So as an example, I can say, you know, let's say const x equal to negative one, then say if math.sign for x is equal to negative one, then we know it's gonna be a negative. And you can do you can do checks like this to determine whether or not it is a negative or positive. And of course, you've also got just a simple check against, uh, you know, less than zero. So you can also say if X is less than zero, that's going to do the exact same thing in this situation. But look, it might be personal preference or a matter of opinion when it comes to uh, how nice this is to read. So is this more legible and easier to read than a check for less than zero? It's going to be up to you. Personally, I kind of like the you know, less than zero check compared to this, but it's going to be up to personal preference. Now, the biggest benefit and tangible benefit I see to using math.sign is that you may wish to use math.sign in uh, certain expressions, okay? As an example, let's say I want to say uh, console.log and basically uh, do my own implementation kind of, of the uh, math.abs or absolute function. I can say five, then times uh, math.sign uh, and pass to x. So basically now what's happening here is it's going to take five and then it's going to uh, give me the same uh, sign, so negative or positive, of x. So I'll save this back in the browser and we get negative five. So you can use it in expressions like this, which may not be as easily done or as clean compared to a check for less than zero. You For that, you would need to do something like x less than zero, then negative one, otherwise one, as an example. Okay, so, and you also miss out on the extra case for the zero, which gets returned with math.sign. So it can definitely be useful in those situations where you've got an expression, you want to simply or cleanly uh, perform a transformation or whatever it might be. So that is your last function, math.sign. And that is all for today's video. If you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.